Jason, how are you this evening, Jason? Yeah, really good, buddy. How are you? Very, very well. Are you looking forward to sort of our interview tonight? Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. A lot to say. Cool. How, how have you been today? Yeah, tickety boo. Life's good. No complaints. So the snow's kind of got in the way a little bit, but. Awesome. So, obviously, this week we've had uh, a massive announcement. You announced that you've started your own wrestling promotion. We're going to go into that. Uh, many, many months of mystery of who's behind Reach Wrestling, and it's obviously been revealed it'll be you and Grayson Reeves as the head honcho, so to speak. Uh, sort of. What? So let's go into that. When did you decide you wanted to go into the promoting slash booking side of wrestling? How did that happen? So, to be honest with you, it came about as a necessity. It felt to me. Because I was looking, a lot went into this that a lot of people don't know. Um, I think with a lot of people, some of the messages that I got and some of the general feel I got was that of like, um, that I was being, uh, that I was hiding and that I was keeping secrets. And there was this feeling that I got from a lot of people in the business and fans are like, that I owe them something, that, that they deserve to know who Ram Reach Wrestling. But it, it, we don't have to tell anybody anything. The booker and uh, who's behind the scenes is was not our was not our point. Our point was what we were doing in front of the scenes. Sometimes wrestling gets lost in all the politics of what goes on backstage, and they forget what's going on in the ring. Now, what we tried to do was keep it a secret because we didn't want anybody knowing who we were. Because we didn't want the emphasis to be on oh it's Jason King or oh it's Grayson Reeves. We wanted the emphasis to be on the product. And the problem is a lot of people, they'll get caught up on the fact, oh, Jason King runs Reach, or Grayson Reeves runs Reach. And the issue with that is that, the issue is that, like I said, I have to repeat it so many times, but we want to try and we don't want that kind of interest in us. We want it in our product. So the what occurred was six months ago when the PWA closed, um, or maybe slightly less than six, um, a few months ago, the, I was in talks of buying PWA. Um, a lot of people don't know that, so that's, you know, anyone that is, this is going to, that'll be news for them. I was going to buy the PWA, but it just didn't, the, the business deal didn't go how, we couldn't agree on certain terms, so it didn't happen. So then I left it a few months, uh, you know, because I thought, I wanted to see what the market would do. I wanted to see where wrestling was going to go in Plymouth, and um, short of one company trying to run Plymouth and failing, um, nothing happened. And there's 250,000 people in Plymouth, and a huge wrestling fan base. And I just thought, you know, I always had a great time in Plymouth. The crowd was always hot. The energy was always great. It would be such a shame if nobody um, gets the opportunity to run a wrestling company in Plymouth anymore. I mean, the fans down there are rabid. They absolutely love it. So for me, it, 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 was, it was one night sat there talking and thinking about how much I missed being in Plymouth and talking with Grayson. And we were chatting away and we were laughing. And I just said, you know what? You know, Plymouth needs a wrestling promotion people can trust. He, they deserve it. They deserve a wrestling promotion for the people, not for the wrestlers, for the bloody fans. You know, and, and I was telling him, if I was promoting, I'd do this and I'd do that and I'd do that. And he starts saying, yeah, you know, and I could do this and I could do that. And it was kind of like that moment. We stared at each other just a little bit too long and we both kind of like, wait a minute. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like we just we started jotting ideas down. And, and this last month has been incredible. I swear to you, we've worked. It must be like 18 hours a day every day. Just on, on this, we've not stopped. We have not stopped for like a month continuously. Um, and tickets went on sale yesterday. You know the early bird tickets. Um, we're doing a special deal for seven days to give everybody the chance to get a, the tickets a little bit cheaper. Um, you know, we just—it's a necessity. Plymouth can't not have wrestling. It's a wrestling city, and it needs to be one that they can trust. It needs to be a brand and a product that they can trust. You know, and, and my name is my is my word. Everybody knows Jason King. You know what you're getting. You know you can trust me. If my name's right, you know it's good. You know, and I think that's important too. Um, we didn't want we didn't want something where um, people would say, oh, this is, you know, uh, we're not going for a small time feel. We're not looking to be small time. We're not looking to um, we're not looking to just come into existence. We're looking to thrive. You know, we really are looking to to give the people what they want. Okay, cool. So, how did you come up with the name Reach Wrestling? And are you sort of when when you when you when you went to restart PWA, were you sort of were you sort of, are you sort of, were you sort of worried at all about going into the wrestling game and that side of it? I guess you've had a lot of experience being down or around good people at WAW and stuff like that, and your previous experience in the business. Um, when you were at Reach Wrestling, when you came out with Reach Wrestling, sort of how how did you come up with that name? Was it just something you and Grayson yeah. decided, or is it something yeah. sort of you like you, you immediately saw? Obviously, you've got your logo and stuff. I think it's a, a real nice package. It all complements each other really well. It all works well together, so to speak. Oh, that's good. Thank you very much. That's fine. I, I think that. 
um, it's, it's polite to say that, so I appreciate that. Um, we, we looked at the market again. We looked at what was going on right now. And one thing that we noticed was um, the days of calling something 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 wrestling are long gone. It's a bit outdated. People want something snappy and fast. And one of the things that people seem to like, um, one of the things that people seem to like um, were, were names like, we looked at Attack, we looked at Progress, we looked at um, Chaos. And, and we realized, you know what, like, these short, sharp names are the ones that people people are getting behind. This is what people have these days in British wrestling. Names like that, you know, what, those kind of those kind of things are what people um, seem to seem to buy into. So we decided, okay, we need something that's kind of got that that short, sharp feel about it too. Calling yourself, um, calling yourself, you know, worldwide wrestling and all that sort of stuff, and and big time wrestling or, or, or fight star, all that stuff. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it just feels a bit outdated. Um, whereas Reach, we came up with when I was driving home, we're trying to think of a name, and I, you know, you keep thinking of all those words that people associate love and passion and energy, and, and we were just like, what the blinking hell can we call ourselves? And you know, we were trying to think, we we're trying to think, and in the end, I, I think I was listening to some music on the way home, and, and in the in the in the lyrics to the song, uh, the chap says he's trying to reach for things that he can't see, and, oh, and yeah. I was like. Trying to reach. I nearly swerved my car off the damn road. I like punched yeah. my steering wheel and I was like, yes, that's what we're doing. We're reaching. We're reaching. And I'm calling Grace and Reeves. I shouldn't admit this, but I was on the phone like while I was driving. I'm calling Grace and Reeves. I'm like, God damn, that's your phone. I've got it. I've got it. He's like, what do you want? Oh my God, I've got it. You know, like like a kid in a candy store, you know? Uh, and, you know, we just both kind of, we both sort of smiled and we were laughing about it and we were both, you know, just like, wow, this is it. You know, this is, that's what we're going with. That's going to be the one. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, it just stayed. It just was. Um, it was just what we went with, you know. Yeah, awesome. I was going to say, when you look at your initial package, what you're offered in terms of who's on your first promotional poster and stuff like that, I think you've made some really good moves. Clearly, you've got yourself. You're fantastic. You've got a good. You've got a good experience. Grayson Reeves, former LEP World Champion, he's, he's been everywhere. WAW as well. There's two two heavy hitters straight away. And then when you add people such as Dirty Dick Riley and Eddie Ryan. I, th- I think it's uh, fantastic, and you've also got Chris Andrews, Eddie Ryan as well. At the moment, for me, he's the southwest answer to Hulk Hogan. He's got that ultimate draw. Everyone knows Eddie Ryan now, ultimately because of his five star heroics, such as when he won the belt last night, for example, on the taping. If anybody hasn't seen, no spoilers there, sorry. But um, no, I think it's really good when you build this. Do you think your promotion will go towards more the local talent, or do you think you'll follow other set promotions that have so many imported stars? Or what what sort of your plans do you reckon long term with this? Well, personally, it's good that you, you like the guys who book. That's a good side. You know, that's that's good. I think we, we looked at again. We did so much research. We wanted we wanted to announce guys that that we felt people want. Okay, and 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 there are a lot of guys in the north and in the midlands and things like that. They've got a good name, but they've got a good name in the north or they've got a good name in the midlands. We wanted people that have got strong names here in the south, here in Devon, here in Cornwall, here in the Dorset area. We wanted people that fans are going to pay to see because fans want to see. And, and you nailed it perfectly. Eddie Ryan at the moment is is pretty much um, the hottest thing in British wrestling. He, he really is. He's it's eight, ten years he's been doing this and he's worked so hard. If you look at the shape he was in when he began, and something I'm really a big fan of is progression. I like progression. I think you've got to continue to grow to adapt to get better. And Eddie Ryan is a great example of a competitor that has adapted to get better over time. Over eight to ten years, you look at him, the shape he's in has improved, his wrestling ability has improved, his look has improved, his value has improved. And right now, he's at the very hottest he's ever been. He's on TV, he's won the championship at Five Star, you know, he's a former heavyweight champion all around the country. And I think he, he was the one for me um, that, that needed to be, and in Plymouth too. Yeah, you know, um, no, and then you, you complement that with Dick Riley, who I think is the best in the country right now. Um, I think right now Dick Riley's having the best matches. What, in this what I would say, sorry to interrupt you, Kim, what I would say as well is with Dick Riley, he's a fantastic addition. This guy recently has had a trial with WWE. He's at that level, that caliber. Instantly, you look at Dick Riley, you look at his matches, they're classics, and you can put him with anybody on your poster. And that would be a classic match that I would want to see. I'm sure all the fans that are watching will want to see as well. You, what you've done is you've built up the five you've announced so far, the four you've announced are all very good workers that can work with each other. And that creates a great sense of mystery for me to what you're going to do on your first show. Because ultimately, if any of them are in matches with each other, you know you're going to get your money's worth with the ticket, certainly. Oh, God, yeah, I think you're spot on. I mean, you, 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 like we said, Eddie's, you know, and Dick, and you've got, you know, Jason King. I mean, Plymouth is, is, is King's Court country. It's absolutely. If you've ever been to PWA show, man, the MCs had to stop stop the show before because they just won't stop chanting Jason King. Jason, you know, the whole arena, man. It was like a it was like a damn football stadium. It was crazy, you know? And you got 
Grayson Rose, British champion for a year in Plymouth, an entire year in Plymouth. You know, nobody could beat him. He beat everybody. You know, you're asking for stars, and nobody says star power like Chris Andrews in this area. He is he's so limited the amount of work he does. In, when you see him, it never changes. It never. I've been in the ring with Chris Andrews, and I tell you, it, the most frightening thing is not when they all cheer because they see him. It's that wow factor when he gets in the ring and you realise, oh my god, that's my opponent. He is as big and as scary, you know, as he looks. You know, when you see somebody on camera and you think, um, you think, oh, uh, he looks bigger on camera, but he's not like that in real life. He's even bigger and scarier in real life. But he's such a pleasant man, he's a great worker, and, and a real, real star feel about Chris Andrews. This is, he probably is the biggest star in these parts, because he's so rarely does he come out to work, he's come out to wrestle. Plymouth haven't seen Chris Andrews in years. They're going to they're gonna flip when Chris Andrews comes to town, I, I assure you. I, you know, it is an obvious choice. For a big man, he has got some fantastic attributes in the ring, and some of the moves he pulls off. Clearly, his prehistoric feud with Eddie Ryan last year was one of the hottest feuds in the whole of Southwest. So I think that's another fantastic addition. So do you believe you're going to stick with these local wrestlers, or do you think we may see somebody from across the pond come over? Or what? What is your initial sort of plan? How How are you planning sort of to running shows? What What type of wrestling are we looking to try and see, basically? We want to give you the best. So wrestling gives you something that nothing else in the world does. And, and that's both um, great physical, so great athleticism, and also great performance. Okay, Nothing else can give you what we give as professional wrestlers. We want the very best. English, Japanese, American, local, northern, southern, east, whatever, I don't care. We want the guys and girls that are going to bring you the very best. You know, that's what we want, is, is the best quality. And, and, and there's a, a place for everything, and everything in its place. Timing is everything, too. There's... If you can offer something, if you have value to us, if there's value as a performer that you have to reach wrestling, then get in touch. I don't like personal feelings aside about anybody. I, I don't care uh, how things are personally between me and Grace Reeves and anybody else in this business. I, I no interest in what our personal feelings are. That's all aside. What we want is is anybody, male or female. You know, that can that that believes they can offer something to reach wrestling. If the people want to see it, then let's do it. You know, um, the guys we picked for our first show are our local talent because in this pool, I mean, look at those five guys on the poster. Reeves, Andrews, King, Riley, and Ryan. You're going to be hard-pressed to find a better five guys anywhere in the country, to be honest with you, when it comes to performance and ability. You know, you'd be pretty hard to find five guys in the north or the Midlands or the east or the west where, where you can say, oh, these five are categorically better than those five. The reach of Booker. I don't believe that there's anybody, that a team of guys or girls that you could fundamentally say are better than those five. You know, and I, and I think we're just trying to give you the best that money can buy. Um, it's it's we, we, no no problem bringing in uh, if they, if there's if there's. Um, talent across the pond the fans want to see, so be it. If there's, you know, um, talent from the north they want to see, so be it. If there's Londoners they want to bring in, so be it. Anybody, if you've got undiscovered talent, you know, we're going to be holding seminars and things and tryouts and because I know what it's like. It's so hard sometimes to get a break. I struggled massively to get my break, massively. You know, the fans always believed in me. They got behind me, but promoters never seemed to give me that. Only so few gave me that opportunity, and I knew I was so frustrated, and I promised myself, if we ever stop promoting, you know, the opportunity is there for everybody, for everybody to try, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. What I would say for in terms of bringing imports and stuff, I'm definitely not a massive fan of that. I think it's okay in small droves, but you've got to realize these imported stars and the cost of them just to bring people over. It's just so astronomical, and I think... Uh, definitely here in the southwest we've got some fantastic wrestlers that i think are just as good as some of these imported stars a lot of these imported stars no offense to anybody ha are over the hill they've been places already they've had their time in the limelight sometimes it's very hard once you've been to the top aka wwe or wherever it is to then come back to this level if that makes sense so i think uh, the way that you're going the way you've got the people the way you've associated i think it looks really good i'm really looking forward to seeing what you do on the first show um do you know is there any sort of update of what type of belts you're going to have is it sort of obviously we're probably going to have a world title do you know if there's going to be a tag team division in redressing can you tell me that or is that still uh, going to be a mystery to be unveiled so to speak um i don't want to give too much away right now yeah, about our plans, but, but if i'm honest i think it's probably going to be a case of we'll have heavyweight championship because that's the richest prize in the game yeah, the heavyweight title that's the one you've got to, if you, if you don't want to be heavyweight champion, then what are you doing? 
You know what I mean? Um, I think it's real important to have a heavyweight championship. Also, further than that, we probably will um, see a tag team division. Like I said, Plymouth is King's Court country. So you got to think, you know, they're going to, I mean, we had some great battles in Plymouth over the years with the Hooligans and, uh, you know, with the Renegades. And, you know, there are, there are several teams that we've got our eye on that we're looking at, you know. Um, I'm sure there might potentially be a women's division or junior heavyweight division. It's all things we're discussing. Like I said, 18 hours of work a day goes into this. You know, it really is. Um, this is not just going to be um, just just wrestling for the sake of wrestling. This really is going to be a brand you can believe in, you can trust. Um, if there's a call for something else from the people and it makes business sense, then maybe we'll look at that too. Uh, but, you know, um, I think, you know, you'll probably see realistically tag team wrestling. Um, it's it's uh, an art to itself. So, you know, and like I said, my history in Plymouth, you know, I retired the PWA Tech Tales. So, you know, you got to think, um, you know, tag team wrestling ain't dying in Plymouth. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, of course. No, way. no, no, awesome. I was going to say, yeah, thank you for answering that. I was going to say, with the... Uh, with the reach wrestling, so you've got your very first show. Are you looking forward to it? Are you slightly nervous? Are you looking forward to seeing the different side of it? Obviously, because we're so used to seeing you sort of perform to a fantastic level in front of the fans. It'll be very interesting to see whether now you've got everything else going on, how, how that changes your sort of your not your work ethic, but your I'd say your focus in the ring. Do you reckon that will make will have any difference now? You're having yeah, to concentrate I, on everything else. I know what you mean. I'll, I'll uh, I mean, like, that um, my, my focus, like you say, will be slightly different because I'm not just worried. Of, it's not just training for one contest itself. Now it's prepping for a whole show. Yeah. A lot of hours, a lot of business go into it. You know, I think um, since coming back from my neck injury, I've had two contests. One was a tag team contest that uh, that we lost in Cornwall, and the other one was a triple threat. Although I didn't win, I didn't get pinned. Um, I think a lot of my time now is is I'm not able to spend as much time on my training and my performing as I was. Because so much of my time now is spent with the reach wrestling, and it's getting to a point now where, like, I think you you got to say, I probably am going to need to pick at some point what career choice I choose. Um, realistically, I, I love performing, I love it, and and I would never ever give less than my one hundred percent. And the day that my one hundred percent isn't enough is the day I probably quit. But I don't think we're there yet. I still think I've got a lot in the tank. I'm getting better. This is going to be a breakout year for me. You know, this really is going to be a year where. I've had a good year last year. Um, the year 2016 was my Academy Championship run year. And, you know, 2017, I stepped up to the mark and showed that I could be more than that. And, and I think this year is going to be the year. Uh, I've got goals. You know, I want to show everybody I, want, I can be a heavyweight champion. I can be the one that you put the belt on. I can be the man that, that goes all the way. So that's my goal this year is to win a heavyweight championship. Um, so I'm far from done in, in, in ring performing. You know, far from done. I just think the business side of it, if we've got to hire more staff, so be it, we'll hire more staff. You know, <laughs> yeah, of course. That. No, definitely. Awesome. I was gonna say I'm gonna go to some of the comments. You've got some questions in the comments. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go to them now. Thank you for the people who are watching. Um, so I'm gonna go to the first one. Uh, somebody said, "Are we likely to see your former tag team partner Adam Flint in Reach Wrestling at all?" Um, if you think, I said it again, man. Plymouth King's Court Country. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No. No. So <laughs> no. You take that out what you like. <laughs> well, well, you know, you um. If I think if Adam Flint doesn't appear at some point, then there will be a riot. So, you know, um, I, I I don't think we need to worry too much about, um, you know, uh, without saying yes or no, no, no of I think we, we're realistic here. You know what I mean? No, no, fair play. And I've got another, uh, where will they appear? Uh, Aaron Duffy in the comments there said, is there any chance we're going to see either the fantastic Robin the King, I'm a massive fan of Robin the King, or tour at the Hagen in Reach. Uh, is that sort of? Do you think maybe down the line maybe we'll see one of them? If you know, well, we've got you, a good drag on. If, if you, uh, heavyweight division. Um, so far we've got Dick Riley announced, Chris Andrews, Eddie Ryan. Uh, there's a few more to it. Um, additionally, that we can add to that, which keep them quiet at the moment. No, it's come with time. Um, I think you, you, Robin Nakim is always an option. He's very dangerous. He's a great performer. He really is a Belgian Bulls. Is, is really a great name for Robin Nakim. He's a monster of a man. But um. We never rule anything out. I don't know who Tor Atta Hagen is. I'll be honest. I'm not sure who that is. Um, he's not contacted us. We always encourage <laughs> we always encourage us to contact us. We always say, get in contact, send us over a CV. And, and you know, this, we'll certainly look at footage. And we, we, we encourage, you know, local talent. We encourage talent from all over the world to, to contact us. You know, um, we'll, we'll, we'll listen to anybody if it makes business sense. Awesome. Now, thank you for answering. I was going to say, um, what are your sort of wrestling goals in 2018? And do you have any goals or any aspirations of where you want to be, say, by the time December comes, for example? I mean, uh, yeah, yourself or even yourself or Reach Wrestling. You can answer both as as a wrestler. 
and as, and as an owner of the company? So I think for Reach, we'll get this first one out of the way in July and see how we're looking. And I think, you know, progression towards the second show, we're just really excited to give the people what we believe is great quality wrestling and great quality performance. Because too many times I've seen shows um, and I've seen promises made by promoters that were broken. I've seen lies. I've seen fans cheated out of money. I've seen fans promised um, a standout performance that was piss poor, subpar, and it's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's never been good enough. It's never been good enough that you can tell a fan one thing and charge them X amount of pounds for a product that isn't worth half that. It, it, it will not do. There's too much of that in this business, and I'm sick to death of seeing promoters lie and steal and cheat, and I'm sick to death of seeing promoters with dishonesty. Uh, I will never lie. So if this is anybody's first time hearing me talk or meeting me, then they'll, they'll know pretty quick what I'm about. And I've got a great business partner in Grayson Reeves. We agree on a lot of things. And the times we fall out, we always bring it down to business. There are no personal feelings in what we do. Um, we make decisions based on business. And that, that's the way we, we do things. I think one of the really important things is for us to always remember that that we've seen what it's like on the, on the side of being um, lied to and, and cheated by some promoters. And, and it, pirates, they are. Uh, and because we know what that's like, our promise is to never have to do that to anybody, a fan or, or competitor alike. You know, we, we just, our goal is to be honest and fair. You know, we're going to bring you the very best wrestling. And I can't say that if I don't believe it, but I do believe it. So as far as reach goes, I mean, honestly, we've got the early bird tickets on sale now um, for a week. Um, it's the second day today, and we've sold nearly 25% of um, our early bird tickets that we put out, a very limited number, and we've sold almost 25% of them already. We, we truly do recommend getting your tickets as um, early as you can to avoid disappointment, because there's nothing worse than turning up to a show and being told, stand in room only, or, or there's nothing available for you. you know. Um, so we do really wish to, to uh, make sure that you know, nobody misses out. Um, as far as things go for Jason King, like I said, uh, I intend to win a heavyweight championship. I'll be the heavyweight champion somewhere by the end of the year. I've got goals in, in various different companies. You know, two, three, four different companies I like to work for, um, that I like to be part of. Um, there are, you know, two or three I really enjoy being part of. I need to get back to WAW. I need to, they're the best in the country. You know, so I need to show them what I can do again. Um, you've got, um, you've also got, um, UPW, um, 5 0 and one you know, I'm still unbeaten in UPW, so I'm back there in March, so we'll see what we can do there, uh, and also we've got, uh, Cornwall, uh, I have intentions in Cornwall to step up a little bit, and it's taken me, uh, two and a half years in Cornwall to win gold, so I want more gold, I feel lost without gold, and I intend to go get some in Cornwall. Yeah, no, awesome, good luck, and I hope you do that, you deserve, obviously, to be that level you deserve that to go up that level which I, I would like to see but no definitely looking good do you think we're ever going to sort of see you back in NEP the million dollar question do you think we're ever going to see you back there or do you think that you're so busy elsewhere now with all your other promotions that your time is so limited that you probably won't be able to go there almost uh, good question I was scheduled to wrestle for NEP twice in October um, and I injured my neck cancelled a bunch of my bookings um, I never heard from NEP after that they never contacted me to say uh you know, you want to come back to work. I, I, I thought we left on good terms. An injury is one of those things that occurs. It's part of life. It's natural. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just the way it is. I've not heard anything since. Um, uh, was um, a bit disappointing, really. I, I was kind of hoping that I, I'd get, a, get well soon or something. I never did. So I think we're on bad terms now, to be honest with you. Um, it feels that way. It's a bit of a shame. I always miss NEP because it was my home. You know, I miss being part of... Talkie wrestling, the, 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 fan, uh, the fan base were so good to me. They watched me grow. You know, Talkie watched me. It was like, I feel like I've used it as a stepping stone now to bigger things, which is a shame because I never looked at it that way. I never looked at anybody else and said, oh, they're bigger than us, they're better than us. I always looked at what was right there in front of me. You know, you never forget your first, as the saying goes. And uh, like, they were like my first. They're my first proper home. And um, it's business. I'd always listen. If they ever called, I'd always answer. If they ever needed me, I'd you know, just out of respect, really, and what they did for me in the beginning, I think I'd always be there, even if, you know, it might not sit well with me sometimes, I, you know, if, if they're listening, you know where I am, pick up the phone, you know, if you, you know where Jason King is, he's not hard to find, um, it would be a shame if, to never wrestle there again, I think it would be a shame if I never ever went back, just because I like uh, the guys on their roster so much, um, good people, uh, good people I came up in this business with, you know, but but you never say never. 
it's the thing, George, you know, you, you never say never, my friend. Thank you for answering, Kim. Okay, so as well, so I'm going to put a million dollar question out there, another one. Uh, so, do you think the web promoters in the Southwest have sort of misadvertised and misinformed their audience to a certain degree that that's sort of making it a lot harder for new companies such as yourself to try and build that trust with fans, so to speak? Yeah, I think you're spot on. Good question. Um, I think what we've got here is so let's break down what we've got. And I can talk about it openly anywhere, face to face with anybody. I've got nothing to hide. I won't run from anybody. Um, you've got DWA in the north of Devon, which do um, a real good product. They've got North Devon sewn up pretty nice. Barnes to Bull TV, um, that kind of area. And they, they put on good quality wrestling shows. They'll use the best wrestlers, uh, you know, that you can buy in, in these parts. Um, they're honest. They're genuine. They don't screw anybody. Um, good people. Good management. Um, great production. You've got Big League and Exeter, and they're stealing the show at the moment uh, with UPW, you know, and in Dorset. They, they really are. Um, doing a, a fantastic little Somerset where it is, they're doing a fantastic job you know Big League at Exeter we love Big League um, CPW down in, in Cornwall um, I know they had their problems previously but you know they're back on the game again they've righted all the wrongs in my opinion any 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 times where CPW had made mistakes I believe they've corrected them and I, I believe not have they just corrected them I think they've progressed forward to show that their product is one that you can trust you can buy into again LEP and Torquay they kind of Leave themselves to themselves, don't they? They kind of do their own they're, thing. I, I, I'm um, sorry, they're, I, they're my home promotion site. So I'm sort of a bit biased, but um, but please, as I said, carry on. Sorry to interrupt you, but I have to say, LEP are probably one of my favourite promotions. Obviously, I represent LEP, so I'm definitely a th thumbs up to that, if that makes sense. But please, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, sorry, of course. Sorry to interrupt you, Kim. Please carry on again. No, you're right. It's okay. It's, it's good passion. You have got passion for LEP, and like I told you two minutes ago, you know, I, I always feel something for them. It was my first, so you, you never sort of. Forget your first year. No, no. So you know, um, you know they do their own thing. The, the one company I'm not sold on is Fight League. The reason I'm not sold on Fight League is because here you got a group of people um, that openly lie, and I can't stand lying. I hate lying, and you got people that openly lie. Posts are made publicly all over social media about mistakes these guys making, about the the lies they tell, and and, and the, the the product that they present somebody. Now, you've got to understand something. Okay, it's very important. I'm not there to see and hear what goes on. I mean, I only hear from other people in this business, but there are people I trust. You know, when, when you're hearing they owe um, people for ring jobs, they owe wrestlers payment, they owe their booking talent, not booking their, you know, hotels. And they're essentially making it so anybody that isn't from this area can look at our, our area in Devon and go, oh, I won't work down there. Yeah, yeah they'll, tarnish, uh, they'll tarnish us all down there, you know, and we don't want that. You know, so we don't want that. The less said about them, the better. You know, I think the less said about them, the better, to be honest. We want to focus on the positives. And, you know, you've got, like I said, the positives. Down in Cornwall, you've got CPW, you've got Big League in Exeter, and you've got uh, Reach Wrestling running Plymouth. You know, and uh, you, in the in the Somerset area, you've got, uh, you've got UPW. Brilliant. I was going to say, how will Reach Wrestling... Oh, brilliant. How will Reach Wrestling sort of differ from PWA, apart from having a brand new honcho? How, how will it differ? What will be different? Well, the first thing is we're not PWA. We're nothing to do with PWA. Um, we're not. People always ask, oh, you're the new PWA. We're not. You know, the WWE don't go into uh, a new city like Philadelphia and someone say you're the new CZW, you know, just because they run Philadelphia too. We're, we're not affiliated with the PWA. All that happened was um, we brought out some of the social media. It was the only business dealing with ever PWA. We're not PWA affiliated. We're not. We respect their history and love what they did, that they brought wrestling to Plymouth and built a fan base. But the reason we'll be different... Um, the reason that we'll be different is because um, I think our product is going to be different, uh, different quality. It's going to offer something slightly different, a bit more action packed, a bit fast paced. Um, it's going to be a little bit more in your face. It's going to be a little bit more um, concentrated on, on high level competition. And, you know, PWE were great and I worked and I loved it there, you know, but, uh, you know, you, you got to think, um, you got to think as well with PWA come the end. I think, uh, you know, they, they probably needed some time away. But look at what we, we have in front of our very eyes, okay? And what we have in front of our very eyes is reach. You know, we I think that we're going to bring you, basically, and I can't stress again, ticket sales are going really well um, in the first day and a half. I really, really do say to people, please, please, please do not delay and get your tickets. There's got to be nothing worse. It's going to be heartbreaking if you turn up. You've been looking forward to this show for five months. You turn up on the day, didn't buy your tickets, and there's none available for you. You know, if our roster doesn't tell you alone, um, you know, what we're offering you. I mean, we're looking at um, announcing our main event shortly. 
Um, that'll be there over the next couple of days, probably over the weekend. We're going to give you our main event. So, you know, you, you've got things to look forward to. You know what I mean? No, definitely. I, I think, to put this out there, anybody that's sort of a wrestling fan, you have to go. Look at that, £10 for an early bird ticket. That's just, where else for £10 are you going to see that level of talent? As you said earlier, that's just crazy, isn't it? You're, you're almost underselling yourself because the ticket is so cheap. I think it's a fantastic um, opportunity, really. If you've never seen Eddie Ryan, never seen Jason Kidd, never seen Grayson Reeves, never seen Chris Andrews, never seen Dick Riley, for £10, you, you can't go wrong. That's five of the best wrestlers or four of the best wrestlers even in the Southwest. I think definitely. Um, how long is this early bird ticket offer on for? Just for the people that are watching that may not have tickets yet, please, please let everybody know. So, so this one's open for seven days. It started yesterday. So you've only got seven days to get your early bird ticket and prices go up slightly. Again, we think we're reasonably priced. Um, the early bird ticket isn't for us. It's for you guys. It's not It's not because essentially our ticket's are a couple of pounds more than the early bird. We're not... This is done for you. <laughs> for you people. <laughs> you know, we, we've no... We're trying to make our product about you. We're going to listen to you. Okay? I think a lot of wrestling is based on what the fans want. You know, we're trying to offer you a product that you can trust, that you can believe in. Um, step one of that was showing you you know, your support has been incredible. It's been amazing. And I think for us, we wanted to say and we wanted to show you we're not we're not just words. It's real. Our actions are going to match our words and we're promising you something. And step one was giving you a deal. Here's a deal. You've got seven days, seven whole days, you know, to go out and buy your ticket at discounted rate at a price that is pretty much affordable for everybody. You know, we got discounted family tickets, kids tickets, adults tickets. They're all discounted. You got a meet and greet for five pound pre-show. Five pound for meet and greet. We're going to be offering a seminar, which has got details coming up soon, for all the local talent, the chance to train one of the very best in the country, more as we get it. You know, there's 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 so much we're offering to fans and, and performers alike. You know, nobody else is doing that. Nobody else is going to give you what we're going to give you. And at that price too, my God, if if Grayson Reeves, Chris Andrews, Jason King, Dick Ray, Andy Ryan aren't worth two pound of your money each, then my God, I'm, I don't want to live no more because I don't know wrestling. If those five guys aren't worth £2 each to get you a £10 ticket, then, you know, I'm in the wrong business. Oh, definitely. I was going to say, you, as I said, uh, please get your tickets if you everybody that is watching. You have to get your tickets. No, but going forward, so I've got another question here. Uh, I'll go to the question that's been sent in before the show. Um, it's not, not a lot of people probably know, but what was your thoughts and experiences of going to uh, NXT and the Royal Rumble earlier this year? Um, any any stories? Any sort of fun memories? Did that sort of ultimately put you to want to promote? Did that sort of, did you see something? I guess you were looking at it through, not just as a fan, but as almost like a businessman, because you're looking at it maybe inspiration to a certain degree. Is, is that correct? Yeah, really? you are spot on. You are absolutely spot on. I haven't that well, but carry on. Go on. Sorry. That's all right. One of the things I think that I noticed was I was looking at their, their production value. Their production value is incredible. That's what makes the WWE the number one, is their insane production value. It's just so good. It just It's just so good. I, I cannot tell you, honestly, the, the, the quality and the amount of like cameras and lighting these guys have got. It just makes their product presentation so professional and, and it's so articulate. It's it's incredible. Um, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It, I just, I cannot, I, it, words don't describe. I'd love to go backstage one day and just look at how they produce TV and how they write TV. And everything in that sense would be so fascinating to me because we want something, again, we want a product that stands the test of time, that looks the part and feels the part. You know, and I think watching WWE, obviously they've got the best performers in the world, best athletes in the world. And I think I was watching as a fan. I started watching as a fan, but as time has gone on, I watch it one hour as a business, and I try to get uh, inspiration where I can. We try to see what we can, what we can make of it. You know, um, I think I think it was spot on. You called it correctly when you said it was. I mean, it was a, a a trip of pleasure, to be honest, to go over to Philadelphia to watch the Royal Rumble live. Um, was an incredible experience. You know, it was nothing like it, nothing like the WB life. But I think it became it became more of a business trip than it was a, than it was a a um, pleasure trip because we just were so engrossed in trying to get reach wrestling off the ground. You know? Yeah, I think it's amazing how you can sort of just go from being both being performers to then see the other side of it. And I think it, that's definitely something that if you've got that, have you always had that inspiration to want to promote or is this just something that between you both, you've now sort of decided why not give it a chance? I think ultimately these guys know the business. You, you're both really, really good in the ring. I think it's, it's really good to see sort of a, a wrestling company run by wrestlers that want to do well for the fans, so to speak. That's what it is. Like, um, I, I think a lot of it is that, 
it really is. It's not fake. It's real. Like to me, it really is about the people. All that they've given us, um, you know, over the, you know, over time, it just, it, um, it, it's it's hard to not. Um, how can I word it? The, I never wanted to be a promoter for wrestling. I, I didn't. I just wanted to wrestle. I just love wrestling. So the promotion thing came, as I said earlier, as a necessity because it felt like there was a, a gap in the market that needed to be filled. And the way to fill it, as far as I was concerned, was um, was was promoting those because Plymouth didn't have a wrestling company and it needed one. As you know, like I said, so many wrestling fans from Plymouth that were missing a product was no longer available to them. And, and our idea was, you know, let's that, fill that gap. Let's fill that gap in the market, man. Let's give the fans what they want. People want wrestling, so let's give them wrestling at the very highest quality at an affordable price. I mean, I can't stress that. Extremely affordable price. Yeah, I think, that's, as we said earlier, uh, I think clearly you can't really go wrong for the price. And obviously, uh, the super and the people you've got as well, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've got announced. I'm sure the, the card will be stellar. I think it'll be a really good sort of way to see debut your product, so to speak. Uh, I have got a question in the comments that I'll go to. Um, somebody's asking, will the show be filmed in July for either online streaming, DVD or IP per view? That kind of thing we're in talks with now. Um, we're looking at that kind of thing. We're looking at the options there, seeing what's available to us, seeing if it's something that the people want enough. And we'll certainly look at that. You know, if, if, if that is an option, if that is something we go with, you'll all know about it, I promise you. You know, we'll make sure that you all know if that option's available. Okay, I'm going to put this out as well. You may not be able to answer it, but we'll ask anyway. Um, so do you reckon your shows will be monthly, quarterly, or do you, are you just going to sort of see how the first one goes and then weigh up when you think the best time is for your next one? Again, it'll all depend on demand. It'll all depend on business demand. Um, it'll, it'll be down to what, what the people want um, and what we can offer. Um, is our likelihood that we, we our likelihood will look to run again before the end of the year. But again, it'll all dep- it's all dependent on, on, on day one. We're not looking past July 8th. We're not looking past reach one the beginning. Um, it might be reach one the beginning and the ending. You know, we, we don't know. So we're just going to... Um, our intention is to build the best product for the people. Uh, continuously we're not we're you know we're part of that community you got to think we're part of the community so it's what the community wants what can we do for the community how can we help how you know what can we do to improve uh people's situation let's find out let's start by getting reach one in the books and you know and, and uh, we'll go from there you know we'll go from there there's a the demand for it that maybe you know we need to, to do more than uh, more than just one we'll see no cool thank you for your answer i was going to say um, have you got sort of any comments or anything you want to add sort of before we go towards sort of maybe the end of this interview? Um, yeah, I mean, I would just say, you know, for, for how you guys have been, the support you've given us has been nothing short of genuinely amazing. And very rare am I humbled. If you meet me, you probably tell pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm someone who's quite, you know, confident in what we do. And I just, it's, it is humbling and, and, and it's also flattering. When you get such a positive response, the amount of polite messages we've received from fans and friends to say, good luck, we believe in you, you know, we'll be there to support you. And it's just so, it makes you feel like you've got to give back to the people. Well, the way I perform as a wrestler, I have to give back to the people. Never miss a meet and greet. Never miss an autograph signing. You don't, Never miss a fan request if you can avoid it because, to me, they're the ones that allow us the opportunity to do what we love. Now it's our time to give back. You know, we're going to give back a top quality product at affordable price. I would say, please, please, please get your, your tickets while you can. There's a limited amount of early bird tickets. Once they're gone, they're gone. Okay, guys, so please, please, please don't delay. Don't leave it. Oh, I'll be a few weeks. I'll get mine. I'll leave it a bump. If you, come, if you know you're coming to the show, you're sure of it, get your ticket in the books. Get it when it's early bird. Get it when you've got a deal. Uh, and we'll see you all July 8th. Brilliant. I'm going to go to another announcement as well that you, that we were aware of at SCW. We we understand you've got a match coming up at DWA as well. Do you want to announce that match now? We'll discuss it in a bit more detail just before we end this tonight. Uh, with DWA, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Very excited to announce in April. I get my chance to wrestle Joe Redman. Um, wow. Okay. Joe Redman. Uh, is my right to a lot of people. I think you got to look at the way he performs as he's the most successful wrestler to ever come out of Devon. To ever come out of Exeter, so for me, um, he was a guy that to be the best. I mean, Eddie Ryan is second at the moment, um, and maybe Chris Andrews is number three. Put myself in the top five that's come out of Devon. I would say, um, as far as uh, quality and ability goes, 
Um, I, I got the ability to be number one. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Um, and I think, um, and I think that it, it's going to be a case of with. <sighs> I don't want to give too much away about how it makes me feel, but it's my opportunity to show everybody that I can hang with the very best, you know, that's ever come out of Exeter. Um, that's what I want. Everybody's got Joe Redman stories about how he's tore him up um, in the ring. He's just outclassed him with his technical wrestling, his strength, his ability, his cardiovascular work. And I'm just like, I look at it like, okay, well, it's my chance to prove again the same thing I've always said. You know, there can be only one best man. And to be the best man is to prove it. You know, being the, you can't just say you're the best man without getting in there and proving it. You know, I have every intention to go out there and dance and pay the piper, you know, so uh, very exciting, very cool. Um, my mind will be on it. I'll be back. The snow is killing my ability to get out and, and work out, but I can work out from home. I can stretch from home. You know, it's no problem. I've been meditating to keep the mind calm. Um, I'll be ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready year round. I think it's going to be a fantastic things. match because ultimately you've got a former NXT tag team champion, former NXT tournament tag team winner as well. Get yourself. It'll be a real good combination of quickness versus just brute strength. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I think is this is that gonna be a main event, you know, or is is that just on the card, so to speak, at the moment? Um, I would say this. If Jason King comes to watch the World Wrestling Joe Redman and it's not a main event, I'd be very, very surprised. I mean I yeah. you know, unless they're bringing in the Undertaker and John Cena, I can't see how anybody else tops um King versus Redman. No, no, awesome. I was going to say, that'll be an absolute classic match. Really looking forward to seeing that. Just before we go to the end of this now, I've got a couple more comments I will hit. Uh, so Aaron, or somebody in the comments, Vince in the comments has said, is there any more word for, any more words, sorry, is there any, has there been any call for Reach merchandise as of yet, or will there be any Reach merchandise? Uh, certainly will be, yeah. Yeah, you've got my word for it, there will be indeed. Yeah, we'll be able to get t-shirts and all sorts, that uh, wristbands and uh, we'll have all that. It'll all come in, it's all coming. Brilliant. There with us. No, excellent. Is, is there anything else you want to finally add before we finally wrap this one up again? Please, please, please do not delay. Please, please, please do not do not miss your opportunity to come to what's going to be. It's going to, people are going to ask you, where were you on July 8th? They will say, where are you? Where were you to? And you want to be able to say to them, I was in Plymouth, uh, the School of Creative Arts, watching Reach Wrestling in their debut, the beginning. You know, what they don't want to say is... Um, Oh, I, I, I was at home in bed, top, top, drinking tea and biscuits. You know, oh, that's lovely. You can do that any night. Reach Wrestling is only coming to town one time in July. You know, you do not want to miss it. Please, please, please get your tickets. Book delay, do not delay. Awesome. I really appreciate you coming on tonight, Jason. Thank you very much for that. Anybody that hasn't, please check out the Reach West Wrestling page on Facebook. Please make sure you get your tickets as well. As we said earlier, £10 a ticket at the moment. You can't go wrong. I think you owe it to yourself to buy a ticket tonight. Buy it at the earliest. Buy it as soon as possible. What do you think, Jason? Thank you, spot on. I think you're absolutely right. You know, um, you the, the, do not miss this. I cannot, you know, what else can I give you other than my words, you know? Uh, I can only give you evidence on July 8th. You know, but if you've been watching our products so far, I think you can tell, you know, we're, we're not here to shit on anybody else. We're not here to hurt anybody else. You know, my passion sometimes, I get a bit carried away, but I just love what we do. And, you know, I, I don't wish it will to anybody. I want everybody to thrive, everybody in this business. I want every promoter to do well, good, bad, or ugly. I want every fan to have a great time. You know, let's bring the product to the people. Let's give them what they want. They want the best wrestling, so let's give it to them. You know, one way or another, let's give them the best wrestling we've got. Brilliant. Thank you for coming on, Jason. Thank you for all the viewers. Uh, thank you for the listeners. Please continue to check out the SCW Wrestling Podcast on Facebook. A lot more content coming soon, but also check out Reach Wrestling. And we hope to get you back on, Jason, nearer the point of your first show when we can go through some matches, if that's okay. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Uh, I've been George Jones, your host on SCW. I've been joined by none other than Reach promoter and professional wrestler, Jason Kinn. I hope you have a good evening. Stay safe in the snow, people that are watching, and take care. Thank you for watching. This has been the SCW Wrestling Podcast. Thank you.